come on board the fishing vessel finest kind this morning and um, she's had a little problem here of the main deck in the area where they do most of their fishing uh, over the gunnel uh, leaking down through so the deck has come loose from the sides of the boat and uh, the framing in this area is not good enough to put it back on so what we've decided to do is sister frame this entire side and rather than using wood we're using plastic now this plastic is a, a high density polyethylene uh, from the plastics company it's called HDMW which stands for high density molecular weight this is the densest of polyethylenes and uh, we buy it in a big sheet and the plastics company actually saws it right to size for it's delivered to me exactly this size these frames here right now are two inches front to back and an inch and three quarters thick and we're actually picking them up just cold and pre-bending them a little bit and then sliding them down in there push that frame down into position it's not quite all the way down or up against the plank and I've got to push it down just a little bit more below the shear clamp you can see it flap in alongside the frame like that now we've got it in position to be pushed up behind the clamp we put a little block of wood in behind here to hold the frame up away from the planking and it's simply so that I can apply a clamp like this if it was down alongside the the other frame I, I, I'd have a hard time dripping onto us now this is a special clamp that I've got here it's a very rigid clamp very strong and I've welded these little bumps on on the uh, face of the two surfaces here that come in contact with the frame so that it actually bites into the frame quite nicely because otherwise it would just slide this plastic is very very slippery what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to move the plastic frame a little bit aft of where it's actually going to be because I'm going to drill a few holes from inside out so that I don't have a big struggle trying to find the holes on the outside of the boat that this frame is actually going to be close to a half an inch away from this frame here the plastic will be a half an inch away from the wood so what I'm going to do is drill a hole just an inch away from the frame and maybe an inch away from the seams we're out to do every single frame on this side at the heads the stuff is incredibly strong it's very flexible but it's incredibly strong and it holds the boat together very tightly it's the shape of the boat actually kept crowded together the plank and that maintains the rigidity of this boat and that's what has to be kept now the other problems in this area were that most all the butt blocks which are a block like like this that's placed between the frame and that the uh, the planks would end on right they're all in the way of the sister frame so we had to remove all the butt blocks and then what we're doing was we're scoffing the planks back in both directions so that we can put scoff pieces back in place of the planking that's been removed so this is not the first time that this plastic has been used. I've used it many, many other applications. I had framed a, a 60 foot Trumpy power yacht with it, completely reframed it. And then I just did a 40 foot um, Coast Guard buoy tender with it in, uh, in Portsmouth. And that boat's in the water, com uh, total success. We're building a 43 foot Alden schooner in Bristol right at this time with plastic frames and fiberglass floor timbers. Now, like I say, that's a brand new construction. Obviously, the frames are going from the shear all the way to the keel. These are not. These frames are eight feet long, and it takes about 10 feet to get to the keel. Well, we can't make that connection down there well because we don't have the boat pulled apart in the middle, so what we've decided to do is end them a little short of the keel, and all the framing down below is actually in good shape anyhow. At this point in time, we're about to close the deck up, and we'd just like to show what's been done. She's had 40 plastic frames put in it on this side. We've replaced the ceiling and the side of the boat in a traditional fashion. This is a uh, three quarter inch, or what would be um, four quarter uh, porch decking actually, Douglas fir quarter sawn porch decking. It's been beveled so that it can be caulked, fastened to the plastic frames with uh, bronze screws. Where I'm sitting here I can show you there's a transition in the deck right here. This is an upper deck forward and this is this deck's a little bit lower. So we've replaced also the uh, stringer that the deck timbers sit on because this was the problem with the boat to begin with. This timber was not much of a timber. It was fastened only to the wood frames with a couple of screws and it had come loose the length of the boat. So the deck and the sides of the boat were no longer connected. That's what we were uh, having the problem with, all the 
deck water would end up in the bilge and you're constantly pumping it out. So that's what we're set out to accomplish. And we've also provided a longitudinal support that uh, goes down alongside here to support these deck timbers. And then we've added stanchions. Now stanchions are vertical posts that are bolted to the floor timbers in the bilge of the boat and come up and support this timber here, which in turn supports the deck timbers. This is where the two clamps, this upper uh, section of deck and the lower section of deck kind of come together. And what I've done is I've extended the after one forward underneath the forward one and bolted them together because I don't want to create like a hinge in the boat or any kind of a weakness in, the, in this area. We're trying to stiffen the area up. And of course it's got, you know, three very, very strong plastic frames running right through the area. The clamping's bolted off to the plastic frames with 3 8 inch galvanized bolting. It's actually a machine screw, a hex head machine screw, and only the hex head is buried in the plastic on the outside to eliminate that large hole that you would have to use if you were gonna put a washer on it because in the, with the plastic frames, they don't need washers underneath them. You can't pull the head of that bolt into that plastic frame. So we've reduced the size of the holes in the plastic frames where we bolt the clamping to the framing. You know, all of this area has got all kinds of little auxiliary blocking in it that, that, that supports the end of the deck and, and different things like that. This uh, deck timber right here is eventually going to be replaced and it actually only butts into this block right here so that, so that it can be taken out without disrupting all of this. All of this work in this area, forward and aft, is designed so that we can remove the deck again later and replace some of these deck timbers without disturbing anything from here up. And that's why you see that I haven't covered these bolt holes here, which are now filled off with a little bit of Portland cement without sand as a filler so they wouldn't hold water that these will be exposed when the decking comes back up and it gives you options of removing these deck timbers without disrupting the rest of the boat. We've put a brand new ceiling inside the framing here the last time you saw the boat that was wide open here, but now it's got a brand new ceiling in it. This is in, done in a traditional fashion and fastened to the framing with screws because the plastic doesn't hold nails well in the first place, so we've screw fastened the ceiling off to the framing. It's been beveled uh, on both edges so that it can be caulked with cotton so it'll be nice and tight. And this is basically opposed to what might be done with uh, plywood and fiberglass. I didn't want to go through all of that product with all kinds of epoxy and all kinds of different things like that. So this is done in a traditional fashion. The only place that's really broken tradition here, I guess, in this situation is this piece of ceiling right here was put in first. It's considerably uh, wider than this one because it extends down behind this first piece of decking or you might call this a covering board that goes around the decking so uh, the thing that I've done here because this is a problem area in a lot of boats it's a harder seam to caulk you know because uh, it, it's on an odd angle whether you put one piece in first or the other piece in first your seam is still on an odd angle so you have trouble with it so basically what I've done is I've progressive bevel sawn this piece so that the angle on the outboard edge of it matches up to this plank perfectly. And uh, I've, I've patterned it and cut it to a progressive bevel, and now I've slammed it up against that piece and glued it off to this piece here. And uh, what you have here now is a seam that never gonna need to be caulked again. So this is a glued seam. Your first caulk seam is here, and then your first caulk seam on the deck is here. And uh, I think it's a mass improvement on the way it's done originally and uh, uh, it's still a traditional fashion and it's got nice beefy lumber you know this is all quarter sawn fur with the annual rings going vertically through the deck and, and uh, you know uh, 90 degrees to the ceiling in this respect so this is a, a lumber that doesn't swell and contract a lot it'll stay nice and tight very durable nicely done